Hey guys, so I am just going to go over this presentation for chapters one and two of The Outsiders, okay? Some important information that you should know. <clears throat> so these are just notes on theme, setting, character, conflict, and more. So for chapters one and two, one important thing to focus on is characterization, which is how the characters are developed, their character traits, and their personalities. These chapters demonstrate the different social classes of the characters. The greasers are poor and live in a world where they feel disenfranchised. Danger lurks around every turn and they feel they can only trust each other. The socias are rich and are perceived by the greasers as a spoiled group who has no problems in their lives. The newspapers will criticize the socias one minute and then celebrate them the next. So we have two groups in chapters one and two that we've learned about. We have the greasers who are kind of like the bad boys. And then we have the socias who are kind of like the suburban, um, like the good guys. Uh, they're like the football players, the jocks, and society loves them for being football players and for being good guys. But these guys get in trouble for pretty much doing the same thing that the uh, greasers do. But for some reason, the greasers are looked down upon and the socias are, you know, looked at as better than the greases. Oh, and socias are short for social. So it's not pronounced sock, even though it's spelled S-O-C-S. -S. It's pronounced soch, which is short for social, okay? Okay, although there is a strict divide between the greasers and the socias, it is clear that Hinton, the author, does not believe the group defines each individual. For example, Pony Boy is a greaser, but he does not fit the role of a tough gang member. He enjoys nature, reading, and staying out of trouble. Also, Cherry Valance does not play the spoiled rich character role. She is sympathetic and warm, even though she fits in with the socials. Now, Derry is presented as the group leader in these chapters. He has been forced to sacrifice his education and take on the role of provider after the death of his parents. Although the greasers are portrayed as a tough street gang, they have a strong moral compass and their loyalty to each other is already made clear. So yeah, they may be bad boys to everyone else, to the public and to society, but in their close knit group of friends, they are like family and they are loyal to each other and they believe in helping each other out no matter what. Some important ideas. So some similarities between members of different social classes. Although there is constant conflict between the socials who are the socials, they have money and the greasers who are like the bad guys, uh, like the kids who are looked down upon and they don't have a lot of money. Hinton, the author, begins to show that the two groups are not as different as they appear. We see that both groups are capable of committing crimes from the socials attempting to jump Pony Boy to Dally slashing Tim's tires. However, we also see that both groups can be sympathetic, warm, caring, and well-rounded. Pony Boy shows an interest in reading in nature, while Cherry's positive interactions with Pony Boy puts a more positive face on the socials. So we're not always identified by who we hang around. Just because we hang around a certain group of people, that does not mean that that's all we are. There are layers to us. We're just not labeled by who we hang out with. Theme, gender. So in these chapters, Hinton suggests that male-female friendships between the socias and greasers are more likely to remain peaceful. So boys and girls from separate social groups can be friends, but boys from separate social groups, for some reason, they can't be friends. And the same thing with girls. Girls from the same, um, from different uh, social groups, they cannot get along, but for some reason, a boy that's a greaser and a girl that's a soch can become friends, even though they are a part of two separate groups. So the male-male encounters in these chapters result in violence, while the male-female interactions are positive. 
This demonstrates the strong masculine bond felt between the members of each group, but also the strong masculine rivalry between the greaser and the social males. So meaning the boys just seem like they always have something to prove and the boys and girls can get along with each other better. They're not in competition for the same thing. In these chapters, Hinton suggests that male-female friendships between the socias and greasers are far more likely to remain peaceful. The male-male encounters in these chapters result in violence, while the male-female interactions are positive. This demonstrates the strong masculine bond felt between the members of each group, but also the strong masculine rivalry between the greaser and social males. All right, so that's it for today. If you have any questions or comments or if you would like to share your questions or comments, let me know. And if I do another uh, video or when I do another video like this, then I'll make sure I address your questions and comments in that video and give you credit for asking and participating. All right, see you in the next lesson.